What's up, Pop Market? You got AJ again. Today we're gonna do an unboxing of Big Star, title third. Uh, and this is in the Big Star Test Press series. So what these are are super limited edition copies of uh, uh, represses of, of their seminal albums done on you know clear vinyl, super limited edition. A little history about third and the band. Uh, Big Star, power pop band from Memphis, Tennessee, I believe. Active in the in the 70s and stopped for a while right after this album came out. This is actually the album that broke them up. Uh, this album came out and then they were active again in the 90s, but uh, definitely a seminal band. They were really way ahead of their time and it was really difficult for them to find commercial success. In the time that they were active, uh, originally on Stax record and then Stax was absorbed by Columbia. Um, both uh, of their first two records were well received critically, uh, but the labels, for whatever reason, didn't push it hard in distro vibe. Didn't push it hard distro wise, and they didn't see the success that they needed to see. But this is their third album, uh, produced by Jim D Dickinson. So let's open this up and see what's in it. The band, uh, the band broke up shortly after this record. They were shopping it around to different record labels and the labels were kind of just looking at them like what what are we going to do with this because it's it's really heady it's really moody and it's really indulgent uh, use my trusty guitar pick i used to open everything so right off the bat it's um it's it's meant to replicate a two inch tip tape box but it's really only one inch thick um i have another record like that. like my shellac record uh thousand hertz Similar fake, but that would be a, a smaller box. But um, yeah, so we're gonna take a look in here. So the look of the box is, it's kind of like, um, you can't see it in here, but it's um, it's a dull matte lamination, meaning like it's kind of like meant to have a little bit of tooth, a little but smooth, not tooth, but like, um, it's, supposed to, it's a little like, kind of like, supposed to feel like paper stock, but it's a little smooth. It's meant to replicate what an old box looks like, so there's a lot of photo distressing. You can see, and there's fake sticker look, um, you know, the marker, and look at the track listings back there, take a look real quick. Uh, it's kind of out of order for what 3 is, like Kiss of Me's on side 2, uh, Holocaust, you know, it's not in the regular order, but all the most of the songs are there, you're missing a few. But, uh, yeah, so let's pop this bad boy open. So, I'm gonna open this guy up. Nothing on that side. All right, so, in the box we have all of this ephemera. So this is, is old, these are old studio cards, reprints of old studio cards. There's a, a music sheet, let's take a look at that. It's in these nice, uh, sheets or this wax paper, it's 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 archival, it's meant to um, not absorb any acids or oils so that it will protect the paperwork. So the first thing is an Alex Chilton studio card. Um, let's see what's on this thing. So this is an EQ card. If you take a look at it real quick, um, for mastering the record. So when you master the records, what you're doing is you're crunching the, um, the dynamics because uh, because before you master, the, there's a lot of peaks and valleys within a, a sound wave, and this is meant to compress everything so everything kind of normalizes the same level. And these are the settings um, for each side of the record so the mastering uh, engineer knows what to do. So that's the first piece of ephemera. Second one we got here is, this is a track log. So each one of these is a track on the mixer. You know, those big things that the engineers sit in front of. And it says what what's going on each one of the tracks. So for example, let's find a popular. So Holocaust, we've got very few tracks. So Vox is on channel four. Base one, channel five, base two, channel seven. Maybe you had two different parts, two different sounds. 
or maybe he was biamping, splitting the signal to a different amp to get to mix a sound. And then you got uh, guitars over here, and I don't know what 12th Street. One, anyways, maybe that's the piano. I'm not positive, but anyways, if you look at these, these will have like all the information on all of the tracks for all of the album, and we have one, two, three. We have three, we have four of these. So this will give you kind of the the skeleton blueprint foundation of each of the songs that teach, tell you everything you kind of want to know for who's playing what and where. Uh, this is really interesting. And the last thing we have, it's the, it's the music sheets for each of the songs, which is pretty cool. Um, all handwritten by Chilton, which is really neat. You can see his handwriting, he signs it. Chords, uh, there's mistakes and things whited out and stuff like that. It looks really cool. Alright, so these are the this is the ephemera. Let's check out the vinyl. So again, the vinyl comes in a nice lean sheet. Um, it's clear vinyl. So that's cool. Checking the, uh, so you got 180 grams, so it's pretty thick. There's no marking on either side, which is really cool. I think that's a lot of fun. Um, but I'm gonna read the little, the, so when they, when they cut the lathes, they'll usually cut something neat into these guys, especially if it's a, it's a special copy, so, STXX, that's probably for Stax Records. 10791, side A, copy 15. Links. And then somebody very nicely wrote, take care on that side. And, uh, oh, that's cute. On this side, uh, it wrote Alex1. I'm guessing Alex Chilton. Um, that's cool. So let's let's hear how it sounds. Now, if you don't know what side the record's on, you have to look right in here, tilt it to the side, and you'll see in the etchings. There's no way you're gonna see it on here, but um, this is side A. It'll say A somewhere on there, and the other side will say side B. There'll be like a B1, A1, etc. If there's other copies, but let's let's spin this up. So, uh, in recap, great sounding record, one of their best records, the, the master stroke of Alex Schoen. Um, there's 500 copies of these made. Well, so it says it's a, it says it's a, a test press, not an actual test press, so it's called the test press series. However, they are super limited edition. We have our hands on a handful of them, and we're going to auction them off on the site. These are retailing for like 300 bucks, um, and we're starting the bidding at $50. But with that said, great sounding record, incredible seminal uh, indie rock record, power pop record, but definitely influence all the greats. But with that said, I'm signing off. Thanks, Pop Market. See you around.